It wasn't enough to do new Snapchat or new Expedia. New Expedia? I've worked it all out on Expedia. This size in Manhattan? You think this is on Expedia? I, I, Expedia specifically said to me that I would be on the big plane to Rorotunga. You know a business is truly successful when the brand name becomes synonymous with the service it provides. If you ever planned a trip online, you've heard of Expedia. It's been making travel industry history for almost three decades, and it keeps going strong. Today, it's not only a website, but a family of brands where you can book hotels, vacation rentals, car rentals, and all your heart's desires. It truly dictates the ways the market is innovating and shapes the whole travel planning experience in the U.S. and the world over. So, how did it come to be? What does it do right? And what can we learn from its history? Expedia wasn't the first online travel agency, but it was the close second. Picture mid-90s. Boys to Men, Pulp Fiction, and PlayStation 1 are having their moment. People are just starting to use dial-up internet to write emails, join news groups, and check bulletin boards. Amazon just launched. Amazon.com sure got a lot. Every kind of gift both hot and not. And the prospect of booking travel online hasn't occurred to many people. As the internet began to change people's lives, one of the first obvious places it could do so was in travel. This is when, in one of Microsoft's meeting rooms, Bill Gates was listening to Rich Barton giving a report on a small project about a travel guidebook on a CD-ROM. Barton didn't believe the guidebook was a good idea, but he had come up with a better one. In his research, Barton learned about a small but very useful command line program called Sabre. It was a curious thing developed by IBM and American Airlines, and it allowed travel agents to make and modify travel reservations from anywhere in the world. But not just travel agents wanted to use it. Sabre was also available to the general public to view schedules and availability via early online services CompuServe and Prodigy. Barton realized that Microsoft could build the same reservation system on Windows, and he came to Bill Gates with the idea. Gates loved it. He came to Sabre with a proposition. Microsoft would build the front-end travel site, and Sabre would provide the back-end. It turned out Sabre was already working on something similar, and after many hours of negotiations, both sides decided to go separate ways. So, in 1996, American Airlines founded Travelocity, and a few months later, Microsoft launched Expedia. In 1997, Expedia had already reported 1 million in weekly air, hotel, and car reservations. The successes were multiplying as the internet's global influence increased and the e-commerce market was growing as well. Soon, Microsoft sold 75% of Expedia to media conglomerate USA Networks, also known as IAC the same company behind TripAdvisor, Hotels.com, Hotwire, and many other travel brands. IAC was building the travel booking empire with Expedia as its crown jewel. So everything was going great, but it would soon become even better. That's when this man entered the picture. Dara Khosrowshahi was Expedia's CEO for more than a decade. His appointment for this role was almost accidental. At the time, he was a chief financial officer for IAC. So when Expedia's and IAC's chairman, Barry Diller, was tasked to find a replacement for a former CEO, he picked Dara. The former CEO left abruptly, and the company had temporarily lost perspective. In Dara's own words, he simply raised his hand and Diller said yes. Did you have any experience in being a CEO? Why did he think you'd be good at being a CEO? Um, he was desperate. This fateful decision forever changed the course of the company, and maybe even the whole industry. So much that Expedia offered Khosrow Shahi 90 million in stock options just to keep him in the company until 2020. Unluckily, Uber offered to make him their CEO in 2017, which is the position he currently occupies. 
So what was so special about Khosrow Shahi's strategy that helped Expedia flourish? There were a few principal things that formed Expedia's direction in those years and beyond. In 2004, when Khosrow Shahi started his role as the CEO, Expedia was experiencing a challenging year. These were no longer the early days of the internet, when the market was a lucrative goodie bag for those who stuck their fists in first. Now, new online travel agencies appeared all the time, and Expedia had to find something that would make them stand out. So he started 2006 with a few critical technology investments that he believed would help Expedia get ahead. First, he wanted to offer more capabilities and more services, transforming Expedia from an engine where people searched and paid for their tickets into a full-fledged travel planning guide. For this, they needed to start selling a great variety of products and then offer customers extra value in the form of inspiring content. Second, he planned to improve the ways they attracted and retained customers, namely by investing more in direct marketing, brand awareness, and loyalty programs. On top of that, traveler service would have to be improved by any means necessary. And finally, Khosrow Shahi wanted to automate the back-end operations. A big step was to integrate Expedia, Hotels.com, and Hotwire, since they used to be run completely separately. The plan was extremely ambitious, and Khosrow Shahi told the team that the process would be expensive with no immediate results. As we will see further, he did act upon his plans, and they did produce the exact results he expected. In just a few years, Expedia.com was bustling with content and assorted services. There were cars, packages, cruises, and activities. You could explore popular destinations, read important travel rules, and even find corporate travel management services. There was also an upgraded rewards program. In 2010, Expedia launched their first mobile app, which appeared just in time for the trend on itinerary management apps such as TripIt or WorldMate. It was innovative, allowing users to track itineraries booked not only on Expedia, but on any travel website. In terms of marketing, Expedia has spared no expense. Since 2005, the company bumped their spend significantly, starting with 33% of revenue attributed to marketing and selling in 2005 to more than 50% in 2015, which accounted for almost $3.4 billion. This is comparable to what Expedia's largest competitor, Booking.com, has spent on advertising, sales, and marketing in 2015 as well. A big portion of this money went to buying adverts and search optimization efforts. This made sure that when someone Googled, say, flights to Las Vegas, they got Expedia at the top of their search results. The purchase of travel-related adverts is one of the most popular ways for online travel agencies to boost traffic. Google has many ways your ad can appear online, from the shopping tab to YouTube video pre-rolls. You do that by placing a bid on a particular keyword, basically deciding how much you're willing to pay when someone searches for that keyword. There's a lot that goes into understanding what keywords are most optimal for your business, and Expedia seemed to have perfected this art, forcing competition out of the search results. With their marketing budget, they could freely bid all they wanted on both popular and more niche keywords across all markets and locations that their brand portfolio covered. Speaking of brand portfolio, they worked hard to increase it too. Apart from the brands Expedia inherited from IAC, TripAdvisor, Egencia, Hotels.com, Hotwire, and more, the company went on a real acquisition spree. Soon competitors Travago, Wodif, and Orbitz joined the family. The same happened with Expedia's original competitor, Travelocity, which they acquired from Sabre in 2015. They also made a huge proposition to HomeAway, a vacation rental company in an attempt to create the world's largest inventory of lodging options and overpowerbooking.com, which held the record before. HomeAway was later transformed into Verbo, which is now Airbnb's greatest competitor in the short-term rental sphere. These acquisitions allowed Expedia to save a lot of time, 
not having to build their own presence in other markets. Besides, it massively increased the number of listings they could provide. Today, Expedia Group has over 200 websites in more than 70 countries. Although they haven't acquired a company since 2019, their initial wave of acquisitions has proven to be a solid mix of strong, successful brands. When Dara Khosrowshahi announced he would step down as Expedia's CEO to lead Uber, he was leaving the company at its peak. Uber, in turn, was in the midst of a crisis after a series of scandals exposing the company's toxic corporate culture led their CEO, Travis Kalanick, to resign. Still, no one seemed to worry about Khosrowshahi. Barry Diller, who appointed Dara to this role all those years before, called the prospect of Khosrowshahi leaving, my great regret, but also my blessing. From our vantage point years down the road, we know how Expedia managed to post the departure of its exceptional CEO. In recent years, Expedia reversed some decisions made during or shortly after Dara's reign. For example, in 2020, they sold Silver Rail, a rail distribution provider. Back then, Khosrowshahi had hoped to bring rail supply online, but it seemed like Expedia's new leadership never saw it as a priority. A similar thing happened with Pillow and Apartment Jet, two short-term rental businesses that Expedia planned to combine under one product, aimed to help landlords attract more bookings. But with the COVID-19 crisis, when the company was being reorganized, the project met its demise in the cost-cutting process. Today, though, with travel having returned to normal, Expedia is focused on two things. First is the new loyalty program called OneKey, which launched in 2023. Just like any other rewards program, OneKey allows customers to collect points for every dollar they spend on eligible travel products and then use those points to pay for future trips. There are other perks too, but the main value proposition is that it combines Expedia, Hotels.com, and Verbo, so people can collect more credits and have more opportunities to cash them in. It's too early to say if the program will be a success, but Expedia considers OneKey a powerful tool that will contribute greatly to user acquisition and retention. Another thing Expedia prioritizes today is the growth of its B2B segment. The company always had a strong B2B portfolio. In 2022, their B2B revenue accounted for almost 22% of their total revenue. With their partner solutions and rapid API, Expedia lends its huge inventory and platform to other OTAs and travel distributors. For instance, they've been powering car rental functionality for Delta Airlines and helping Walmart with their exclusive travel platform. They are basically a leader in travel white labeling, and they have big partners and big plans for the future. Expedia was there at the dawn of travel distribution, and it will most likely prevail for many years. Its story can teach us that, yes, having an exceptional leader is very important, but what matters even more is the ability to create opportunity based on perception and vision. And pounce. Let us know what other fascinating travel businesses you'd like to hear about and subscribe for future videos.